Thank you, Liz. It's a pleasure to be here. And good evening, Liz, asked me to talk about the uh, Liverpool Bio Innovation Hub that we're building at the university currently, because it demonstrates an interface between academia, industry, and the NHS. And I guess having listened to Liz and to Ken this morning, the theme of today undoubtedly will be systems integration and how we make things work, because over the last 10 or 20 years, I guess, we've managed to fragment the system in many ways, and it's now time to rebuild it. So I thought I'd start off with the context, the context of health research. We've had absolutely enormous advances in our understanding of biological sciences, medicine and health over the last 10 or 20 years. Advances that have been arguably unprecedented. We now can describe a disease not by the organ that it affects, but rather by its molecular signature. We understand the interaction of genomics, environment, social factors to create the phenotype and the need to study that phenotype along with the, the genotype. Now this advance in molecular understanding of disease creates enormous opportunity for new intervention. We can identify new disease modifying targets, we can develop new drugs, we can reposition old drugs, we can use them in a safer way with fewer side effects by selecting patients better, we can get better responses because we target patients that will respond well to particular agents. However, we still have problems. The number of therapeutics is declining and year on year, 17% of the, the new medications that are approved require a biomarker for their use. That biomarker only comes by understanding the biology of disease because it predicts who will respond or who you want to protect from, disease, from side effects of the intervention. There's no doubt that when we bring things together, we can make massive savings. The academic health science system in Duke, for example, is said to save up to $300 million a year by integrating the system and bringing innovations quickly into practice. That's a substantial saving for any health economy, not least for an NHS with the challenges that it faces today. So our problem is we understand the benefits of innovation. We understand biology and we understand how to translate it. Yet we still have particular problems. In the NHS, it takes on average 17 years to get a new innovation into practice. And that's many years too long. So we really need to make a difference here. The translation of innovation through to adoption and diffusion stalls at two points. It stalls at innovation and it stops at diffusion. So when we look at translation, we have a pathway that runs all the way from discovery signs, the sort of stuff that takes place in universities. You will then think up new applications for the signs that will happen in universities and industry. We take it through experimental medicine. We show that it works. We then take it through the whole system, through the population with clinical trials, adoption, diffusion, and that covers the whole span of an academic health science system. All the way from an academic health science centre on the left of translation that does the innovation and the discovery science, through to the adoption and diffusion which crosses into the arena of the AHSN. But working together we can create that whole system that can unblock that chain, that chain of value value for our healthcare system. Now I mentioned to you that I thought reintegration was the way ahead. And from a university perspective, it's really important in health that we integrate research, education and practice. Practice leads us to ask the questions, what can we do better? Research answers that question and then we have to educate our workforce rapidly so that they can make that real difference. Now, this isn't a new concept. This concept was put forward in the Good Enough report, which predated the NHS in 1944, when it was pointed out that in teaching hospitals, the furtherance of teaching and research should have equal emphasis with patient care. And if we embrace that, at the centre of that integration lies innovation and excellence. And that's what we have to aspire to. Now, to fuel that translation at the left-hand side of the chain, you need universities driving that basic science and providing facilities. 
So I thought I'd just tell you about the journey that we'd been on in the University of Liverpool. Because we had problems a few years ago and we set out on a journey to improve and to integrate our offering and make a real difference. So in the last few years, we've driven up research awards from 50 million to over 74 million. Our total research income for the university is 102 million, but 75% of that comes from health and life sciences, a massive improvement in performance. We restructured substantially in order to integrate because we had many faculties that were small and we created one large super faculty of health and life sciences. That allowed us to create cognate groups focused on key areas. Well, our Medical Research Council application success has increased from 4% to 29%, one of the best in the country. BBSRC success increased from 19 to 33%. ESRC success rates increased from 8% to 56% and we're now ranked fifth in the UK for BBSRC successes and eighth for MRC successes. We've got more centres than ever before in the city. We've got two health protection uh, infection research units. We've got an MRC arthritis uh, UK research centre. We've got the pancreas biomedical research unit. We've got a UK regenerative medicine hub, a, a national hub for st stem cell safety and its applications in regenerative medicine brought to Liverpool afresh. We had no record in this area and we went from a standing start to being a UK leader in under three years. But perhaps for this audience, I want to stress the value of a new development that we created, a development called the Technologies Directorate. Now that delivers outstanding efficiencies from equipment funding. These are shared resources across the universities and they're shared resources with industry. It's been highly successful and here are some examples. We recently got a 3.2 million award from MRC to establish a centre for preclinical imaging. In the BBSRC Capital Funding Awards, we've had the best performance in the UK in two consecutive years. Of 42 awards, seven went to Liverpool over that two year period. No other university had more than two. We got four in the first year and three in the second year. So that's made a real difference to our capability and capacity. So this is our technology directorate. We've got a large number of shared research facilities around cell imaging, uh, structural biology, genomics, proteomics. It's got very strong academic leadership. It's got an auditable, auditable process that shows you the value that it brings and the money that it generates. But most importantly for this audience is it's open for industry. And we encourage industry partners to come and use this equipment. And it means that you can get access to our facilities and our technology platforms, which are arguably the best in the UK at minimal cost. There's no capital outlay. It's purely the cost of accessing the system. And also to address translation, three years ago, we developed Liverpool Health Partners. Academic health science networks hadn't been invented at that stage, but we knew we needed to integrate the health economy in Liverpool because we've got far too many trusts for a small population and it was important to bring them together. Now at the heart of any academic health science system lies an academic health science centre. And LHP was a self-designated one that we set up around three years ago with 12 partners, nine NHS trusts, a clinical commissioning group and two HEIs with three strands around research, education and clinical service to pull all of these together and to make a real difference in the city. This allowed us to create critical mass, which independently we would never have. And it's also delivered the Liverpool Health Partners Biomedical Research Centre, a new initiative that we're currently structuring with uh, around £1 million of investment coming from the Trust, particularly the, the Royal Liverpool and Liverpool Health Partners. We've also got a joint research office to unblock some of these blocks that industry faced. This brings together sponsorship, costings, contracts, to make a real difference through a single office, a single portal for this work. In our first year of pilot um, study in, 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 with the Joint Research Office, we had £22.8 million worth of applications and a 61% success rate with a smoother system to exploit this. So this allows us to, to show Liverpool, to present Liverpool as an integrated whole in the research health landscape a whole that integrates beautifully with the Academic Health Science Network to create that system across the Northwest. 
Just to show you the value of coming together, this is a league table for NIHR-funded research. This is the number of patients recruited in England. It runs from the best recruiter on the left to the worst on the right. As you can see, Imperial Healthcare Trust are number one. And if you look at Liverpool, you've got Aintree 91st, Walton 78th, the Women's 58th, Royal Liverpool 39th, Liverpool Heart and Chest 36th. But if we put them together, we become number two in the UK. That's a very powerful message and a very powerful position because we know that in the UK health landscape at present, size matters. Scale attracts investment to all levels. And by coming together in Liverpool, we can make a real difference. Even if we put two of our big hospitals together, just Aintree and the Royal, for example, we're above Birmingham and just below UCLH. That's the power that we have here, and it's the power that we've not yet exploited. So coming back to that systems integration, I put it to you earlier that we had to join up research, education, and service. But I'd like you to think again, because I think it's also important, indeed it's incumbent upon us, to link up universities, health service, and industry. Because that pipeline is fractured, and you've heard from Liz the importance of getting that integration. Sometimes it's very simple things like changing the procurement process, but we have to take down the organisational barriers that prevent this working. And the Liverpool Bioinnovation Hub is one approach to try and unblock some of these problems. This is an innovative approach to research and industry links from a, an academic perspective. This is a new building that we're developing on campus, immediately adjacent to the Royal Liverpool and where the new Clatterbridge uh, Cancer Centre will be, literally 20 yards across the road. Four floors, 20 units of approximately 2,000 square feet with laboratories, write-up space and offices. And this delivers flexible accommodation suitable for SMEs and for uh, in biomedicine and biotechnology with the opportunity for a large anchor tenant. The fundings come from the university, from EDRF funding and also from the AHSN. And it will be ready for occupation in about nine months' time. What it does is it brings together research and opinion leaders, people who lead globally in areas such as infection or in precision medicine, it brings together technology platforms through the Technologies Directorate that I mentioned to you. It brings together some of the best biobanks in the world to make an impact with access to phenotyping data. And it brings in the Liverpool Health Partners Biomedical Research Centre in Precision Medicine. So it co-locates that space for research with space for SMEs. And it allows access to patients, to uh, biobanks, to technology platforms, to opinion leaders, with a relatively low entry tariff. It interfaces very well with the NHS, literally across the road, and also with world leading areas in materials, discovery science, for example, that can impact on health and in bioengineering. So I think here we've got a tangible opportunity to work together to break down these barriers and to make a real difference in innovation. So the whole system should work together by the university discovery science bringing together the biobanks, with uh, the Centre for Personalised Medicine, with the Centre for Genomics Research, with uh, uh, Liverpool Genomics Laboratory, with this MRC Centre for Drug Safety Science, and that should play into our clinical arena of clinical research, bringing through improved efficacy and safety, and using that bioinnovation hub to amplify and to speed that process, taking it through to implementation with the Clark and the AHSN, delivering it to the trusts, and making a difference for our patients. So by integrating the system in many ways, we can make a real difference, and we've got enormous opportunity in it now. Here are some photos of the, the development, which is currently underway, and this will be the future of biomedical innovation, a tangible new development here in Liverpool. Thank you very much.